Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vloggy thing. Today is a red letter day in YouTube history because YouTube Red went live. Seriously, I should be calling it YouTube Brown because everybody is flipping their shit over it. It's insane. Everybody's freaking out over YouTube Red, and to an extent, legitimately. What is YouTube Red? Well, YouTube Red is the subscription service that Google promised us a few months ago. You pay $10 a month, you get ad-free YouTube. Now, along with ad-free YouTube, you get uh, YouTube Music, which is apparently a different thing than just regular ad-free YouTube, whatever. Google Music, which is a great little service that I've been using for, what, a year now? I don't know, a while now. Uh, background play for the mobile app. So like if you're listening to a podcast or something else where the video isn't really that important, it's the audio that you want to listen to, you can turn off the screen or you can, you know, browse somewhere else, you know, on your phone, you open up the browser or whatever it is and still have the podcast playing in the background. And I could definitely see a use for that because I always have a, you know, a YouTube video playing on my second monitor while I'm working on my first. It's pretty much universal for me anyways. So I can definitely see a use for that. There is also offline play for the mobile app. So what you can do, you can download the YouTube video and then play it later. So like if you have really shitty cell phone reception and you get crap internet on your cell phone, you can download the, the YouTube video, obviously slower than you'd be able to play it, but you'd be able to download it and then watch it in a higher bit rate without the buffering which is really cool. I like that. And then another way, you could, if you know that you're going to be out of communication range for an extended period of time, if you're going into the boonies somewhere, or if you're going on a plane that, you know, you either can't use the Wi-Fi because it's, you know, non-existent and they're still in the past saying that, no, turn off your cell phones. Uh, or if, you know, they have Wi-Fi and it's just crap service or really, really expensive, you can download a whole bunch of YouTube apps beforehand or YouTube videos beforehand and then watch them on the plane or on the train or in the boonies or whatever. So it, it's giving you a bunch of things, but the trick is that the $10 a month is getting split up between YouTube, Google in general, and they're taking however much of a percentage that they're taking. And the rest of the money that you're paying is getting split up between Google Music, YouTube Music, and YouTube. So all of the stuff you listen to and you watch get a bit of that money. And it's not even that simple. How that money is distributed is mostly unknown. We have rumors but, you know, at least they're good rumors. They come from Total Biscuit, and he's usually on the ball about that kind of stuff. He's usually got the inside track. But until Google confirms it, it's still technically a rumor. And it is just technically a rumor. It is as close to the truth as we can get at this point. At least I'm going to qualify it as that. Uh, but basically what the rumor says is that all of the money that's not going directly to Google gets into this giant pool of money that I'm going to be calling the red pool because there's a joke in there. I just haven't thought of it yet. Yeah, so I'm going to call it the red pool. But once a month, all of the money in the red pool gets distributed to all of the stuff that people with a YouTube Red subscription has consumed uh, between the Google Music and the YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, all the money gets distributed. We have no idea what the algorithm for that is either. Not a clue. There's something about hours watched. You know, more hours watched get you more money. But I don't know really how that all works. I really, really don't. Because it's Google, and one, Google is terrible at sharing information. I mean, I can kind of understand why, because if they did, then people would try to abuse the system. So they try to keep their algorithms quiet. But two, Google is not simple. Nothing they do algorithm-wise is simple. They love their long math. And just saying that it's going to be based on hours watched is really, really or like optimistic when it comes to dealing with Google, that it's going to be something that simple. And I really don't think it's going to be that simple because Google doesn't do simple. Now, 
because of all of these unknowns, because we have no real clue how this money is going to get distributed, we have no real clue how many people are going to subscribe, we have no real clue how advertisers are going to react to this information. Because we have all of these unknowns, everybody's afraid. People fear the unknown, and in this case, somewhat legitimately. But, and this is mostly what I think, I can't confirm this for real, but this is mostly what I think. I think that it is going to be either the savior of YouTube or it's going to be the destroyer of YouTube. It, there's no middle ground at this point. It's either going to save YouTube or it's going to kill YouTube. And the reason I say it's, you know, it could potentially kill YouTube because it could fuck everybody over. It could give all of the money to the big guys and none of the money to the little guys. And I've got bad news for you, Google, if you do that. The little guys are what make YouTube. Yes, a lot of people watch PewDiePie, but if nobody else was around, ain't nobody going to use YouTube just to watch PewDiePie. Um, yeah, it's because you have this huge, diverse culture in YouTube that's why people come to YouTube. So you have to reward everybody for you know putting the stuff up there. At least everybody who wants the re reward for it. Everybody who checks the button and says monetize. And there are plenty of people who will do it just for the fun of it. So if if YouTube stopped paying content creators tomorrow, a lot of people would leave. But a whole hell of a lot of people would stay as well because a lot of people do it just for the fun of it. I, I do it for the fun of it, mostly. Um, yeah, that's a story for a later time entirely. But I do it for the fun of it. I probably keep doing it because I do it for hobby now. I don't really do it for money. I haven't been paid by Google in over two years because ad revenue is not there anymore. But... I'd still do it. There's plenty of people who would still do it, but it would be a terrible burden on Google because Google, you know, has to pay for all this crap. Uh, anyways, um, so it, uh, where was what was I saying? Uh, yes, it could kill YouTube because it could distribute the money wrong, or it could not be enough money, or it could absolutely terrify advertisers and make them go running away from YouTube, which they shouldn't because there's. No matter what Google does, there's still going to be plenty of people who aren't going to pay the subscription fee. There's a lot of people already who think $10 a month is too much. And I'm okay with that, too. Uh, but, yeah, it could kill YouTube in that way. Or it could save YouTube because Google got the distribution just right and it's rewarding everybody and the little guys are making more money and the big guys are making more money and everybody's happy and the advertisers are happy because there's more people or there are plenty of people who still want to watch the advertisements instead of pay and you know it, it could save youtube but i really 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 think that something has to be done because if it's not done, YouTube is dead. Okay, that's right now, that's where I think YouTube is going. Without the subscription service, YouTube is going to die. It's going to be years down the line, but it's going to be a slow, painful death for YouTube. Because the, the, the problem is that more and more people are using Adblock software. More and more people, and we're talking somewhere between 50% and 90% of YouTube watchers use ad blocking software, some form of way to block ads, ads. And I have to admit that I do. I block ads for YouTube. Not because I want to, I'm perfectly content with watching advertisements and supporting my YouTubers. The problem is that Google switched up their advertisement serving a couple of months ago. Uh, I think it was a couple of months ago. I forget how long ago it was. But all of their advertisements now go through DoubleClick.net. Now, along with ad blocking software, AdBlock Plus, which I do have disabled for YouTube, I do, I swear, uh, I use NoScript. And I'm very particular about what domains I allow JavaScript to run on from. DoubleClick.net is on my permanent ban list. Now, it's for reasons that are long since forgotten and probably long since irrelevant, 
because they were things that happened before Google bought DoubleClick.net, but they're still on my shit list. And I refuse, refuse to allow scripts from DoubleClick.net. I haven't seen an advertisement on YouTube in months. Now, I know that I see advertisements, and I know I can see advertisement. It's just not some magic thing because I see them on Twitch. And if I disable DoubleClick.net, I see advertisements again. But because I refuse to allow scripts from DoubleClick.net, I don't see advertisements. So this subscription service came as you know, a welcome thing for me because now I can support my YouTubers again, and I can feel happy about it. Um, but because of things like that, because of adblock plus and because of you know the little trick with doubleclick.net less and less people are watching advertisements less and less people are available to watch advertisements and you know if you're using adblock plus and you're not seeing an advertisement that advertisement is not just playing in the background somewhere and you know the youtuber is still getting paid for it no google knows that you're not watching the advertisement and Google doesn't charge the advertiser. And if the Google if Google doesn't charge the advertiser, the content creator doesn't get paid. Google doesn't get paid, the content creator doesn't get paid, nothing. No money changes hands whatsoever. That's actually the big draw of AdSense, of Google's ad service, is that if somebody's not watching your advertisement, you're not paying for the advertisement actually a big draw for advertisers this is why so many advertisers came in early on is because you know google could say hey we've get we're getting millions of views a day and you know all these people are actually watching your ads and if they don't watch your ads you don't pay so it drew a lot of advertisers in well now that most people aren't watching advertisements advertisers are leaving they're going elsewhere they're taking their money and they're leaving that means that the ad space costs less because that's another draw of google's ad service they are very up to date they are very strict about making sure that the advertisers are paying the least amount of money possible for the advertising space so if uh, if more and more people want the advertising space, obviously that space becomes more valuable and people have to pay more for it. But if less and less people want that advertising space, that space becomes less and less value, valuable and they, people pay less for it. So we get more annoying, more crappy ads, uh, which kind of make people feel forced into using ad blocking software. And it's kind of a horrible infinite loop. And Google has noticed, they have noticed the steady decline in ad revenue. I've noticed the steady decline in ad revenue. Other people, other YouTubers have noticed the steady decline in ad revenue. And I've seen this from multiple different sources that are unrelated to each other. Like there, there are groups of YouTubers that talk to each other and there are other groups of YouTubers that talk to each other but they don't talk to group A. And I've heard it from multiple different groups that they've noticed that their advertising revenue has dropped. And if their advertising revenue has dropped, then Google's YouTube adver revenue has to have dropped. It's just it has to have. And Google is a business. They notice this shit. Uh, they're in it for the money. As much as we want to think that Google are the nice guys, they're the altruistic guys, they're in it for the money. And it's the way they get the money that's important. Google has always been about providing a great service and drawing people in instead of trying to force people to pay. So they try to entice people to pay instead of forcing people to pay. And they, they're they pretty good at it too. I mean, that's how Google made their millions of dollars. They made a great search engine that I still can't kick because they're still the only ones that can provide me the stuff I'm looking for and they entice advertisers in to pay for advertising space. Uh, YouTube was exactly the same. They provide a great service and they pr get a lot of eyeballs watching the videos, so they entice advertisers to come in and pay for advertising space. Uh, Gmail is slightly different now. Um, they provide a great email service 
and they provide a even better email service that you can pay for. It's like five bucks a month. You get, you know, more, uh, more, uh, a bigger mailbox. That's the word I was looking for. You can get a bigger mailbox. Um, you don't get advertisements. I know there are advertisements in Gmail. Uh, you don't get advertisements if you pay for it. So technically, Gmail's been doing this for a while now. Hmm. Mm. Anyways, uh, Google Music, another great service. The free service, you can upload like 20,000 of your songs. So if you have you know, a whole bunch of MP3s, you can upload it to Google service and then you can stream it to like any device that you log into. You can use the music.google.com website or you can use the Google Play Music app on your phone and you can stream your music anywhere. So if you got a little tiny phone, you know, you have 16 gig of storage on your phone and four gig is taken up by the operating system and, you know, two more gig is taken up by the bloatware that came with your phone. You really don't have the space to waste on all your music. But 20,000 songs is a hell of a lot of music. I mean, I had eight gig of music and I don't think I used 1% of, you know, 20,000. So it's, it's a great little thing that you can do for free but if you pay 10 bucks a month for google music you also get access to all of the music on google servers so all of the music that they have licenses to play you can access and it's in high quality streaming and blah 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 but i have yet to find a song that i want to listen to or for any reason particular in any reason at all i have yet to find a single song that's not on google music now i know they exist i'm sure they exist but i haven't found one yet uh even songs that you know you see advertised it's like oh buy our cd or find us on itunes and that's all they say it's cd or itunes i found on google music because you know the people that they contract to put stuff on itunes they also put stuff on google music and just People don't really know. Even my pizza guy, you know, great guy, nice guy. Uh, he's got a band. He's got a record contract. And I, he, he has CDs. I have one somewhere around here. Mm. Uh, but, and he told me uh, his songs are on iTunes. And I went, oh, is your music on Google Music? And he said, I, I don't know. It's on Google Music. Both of his albums, <laughs> the same album is just one was made before the record contract and the same album was remade after the record contract and the second one is significantly better quality but uh and both of them are on google music and <laughs> it's kind of insane uh so yeah google provides a great service and then they entice people to pay you know to use more of the service and they're trying to make YouTube the same because Google doesn't want to kill off YouTube. And YouTube has a hell of an overhead. They have to pay ridiculous amounts of money for their internet connectivity. Because seriously, people upload, what was it, like three days worth of videos every minute or something like that. It's probably more than that now. But it's days of video every minute imagine how much bandwidth is required just to do that and on top of that you're providing millions of people a day bandwidth to watch all of these videos and google is all about making sure that everybody can get as high of quality of video as they can so we're talking you know 720p 1080p 4k video if the uploader uploads it in those resolutions but google has to provide bandwidth to people so they can get that high quality and if you can't chances are it's actually your isp that's the problem you're not you don't have a fast enough isp for one reason or another but google has to deal with that as well uh there are isps out there i'm not going to name names <clears throat> that intentionally degrade the services from youtube in an attempt to convince YouTube to do a uh, pairing deal and pay not only Google's ISP, but pay that ISP to serve their content. But of course, 
that ISP is also getting their subscribers to pay to access that content. So that ISP is trying to double dip. So Google has to fight those people off. And, you know, they're petitioning the government about net neutrality and all that fun crap. And they're actually paying attention to that stuff. And then, of course, there are the lawsuits. I mean, what, who was it? Viacom, I think it was, sued Google, put Google in court for like five years and Google had to fight that for five bloody years. And there's so much money involved in just running YouTube that they kind of have to make a profit off of it. They can't be losing money on YouTube because, you know, that would kill Google. And Google's a publicly traded company. They've got stockholders poking them in the ass with pitchforks saying, make money, make money, make money. I care about quarterly returns, damn it. So if Google doesn't make money, then they're going to have to start cutting off the services that don't make the money. And they're not really shy about it anymore. Uh, ask anybody who used to use Google Reader. Now, Google Reader was an amazing RSS reader. I used it. Everybody loved it. It was an amazing RSS reader. Wasn't making Google money. Cut it off. And there used to be, you could go into Google Labs and you could see this huge giant list of things that they were playing around with that you could access and you can play with and you can use. And they did amazing, amazing stuff. Not there anymore. Gone. Google is slimming down. They are a big company that has publicly traded stock and they have to worry about that kind of crap and they have to worry about contract deals and ugh, insanity. So if YouTube stops making Google money, they're probably not going to keep using, they're probably not going to keep up YouTube. Spin it off into its own company, sell it off to somebody else, or just cut it off entirely, Google's probably not going to deal with it. YouTube can't be used as a loss leader. It can't be used to draw somebody in to paying for another service. The best they can do is provide advertisements or the subscription service. That's really the best they can do. They can try to force people to watch advertisements by refusing access to people who use ad blocking software. It's possible. I've seen it on several websites. Problem is, when I see those websites, I tend to go elsewhere. Now, I'm sure a lot of people would be more than willing to disable their ad blocking software to watch YouTube. Probably the vast majority of people. But there will be plenty of people that don't. And it's going to be another mental transaction for people to deal with, and it's going to drive people away. Google doesn't want to do that, so they're not going to force people to disable their ad blocking software. So the only other reasonable alternative is to provide this subscription service. And it brings about a lot of fear. I'm worried about it. I am. Because if they do it wrong, it could kill YouTube. Now, I don't watch TV anymore. Not really. I spend most of my time watching YouTube. I don't want to lose that. And I really, really, really would rather not do that because if that happens, then the content creators that I love at best split off and create their own video streaming service or use other streaming services and it's all going to distribute and then I'm going to have to go here to watch this and here to watch that. And I already don't do that. Seriously, Team Four Star, all of their stuff goes on their website or the what do they have one of those other there's another video streaming service that you can sign up for that you have you have to pay to access. I forget what it's called. Uh, but it's completely subscription based and a lot of people have started putting their content there and then a couple days later they put it up on YouTube. Um I already don't subscribe to that. Uh, I don't go to Team Four Star's website to watch the content on their website a week early because, personally, I think their website sucks. Uh, their video streaming service isn't great, and it buffers a lot, and I just don't – I won't use it. Um, but if all of my YouTubers – go off into different services then I have to go here to watch this I have to go here to watch that I have to go here to watch that and somebody's going to lose out hard because I'm not going to be doing that and it's not because I don't want to do that it's because I'm not I, it's just not going to happen I will have the desire every now and then to do it but without a nice centralized location I just 
wouldn't. Think about uh, like um, all the web comics you read, uh, all the websites you go to. How do you keep track of when they update? Well, chances are you might use an RSS feed uh, like Feedly or Google News or what was that called? Google something. I think I called it Google News, didn't I? That's something else. That's news.google.com, and that's a great little service. Um, but, uh, oh, what was that service called? It was Google's RSS feed. I loved that service. Um, but anyways, so y you'd use uh, an RSS feed, so it would be a nice centralized location where you can go through all of the stuff that you want to look at, or Reddit. Reddit is a great centralized location to find things. That's why Reddit is so big. It's a nice centralized location. That's why YouTube is so big. It's a nice centralized location. People have to go to one place to find all their stuff. If a lot of content creators disperse into a lot of different or a lot of different websites, the viewers for each one are going to drop significantly. So I really hope this succeeds. But yeah, so and I really hope that YouTube, that Google has done some serious thought in this, and I don't doubt that they have. Anybody who thinks that they haven't thought of the little guy when they made the subscription service is fooling themselves, or at least not thinking it through the whole way. Google knows that it's really the little guys that make YouTube. Yes, there are the big names. There's Pie. There's you know, the royalty in YouTube. They draw millions of views, and they draw lots of money. But if it was just PewDiePie, how many people would actually watch PewDiePie? PewDiePie would lose subscribers if he was the only people on YouTube or only person on YouTube. He wouldn't gain subscribers. He would lose subscribers. <laughs> Seriously, it's because YouTube is such a diverse community. There's so much different stuff on there. No matter what you're into, chances are there's a video on YouTube about it. And I'm probably not kidding when I say no matter what you're into. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff on YouTube that probably really shouldn't be on YouTube. But, you know, what? because YouTube has such a diverse population, because there's so much diversity in there, that's what makes YouTube so great. If, you know, YouTube starts killing off the little guys, they're going to lose that diversity and they're going to fail. Google knows this. And to think that they're not thinking of the little guys when they make the subscription service is just not thinking the whole, whole way through. And definitely, definitely thinking that Google hasn't talked to, like, the multi-channel networks like Machinima, that's really not thinking it through because they're the ones that have the clout to kind of go after YouTube about things. They're the ones that actually get shit done. That's kind of the reason that a lot of YouTubers still are part of one of the multi-channel networks. Is not for anything that the multi-channel networks do actively for them. It's that, you know, you can talk to your representative at the multi-channel network about a problem and chances are it will actually get resolved, unlike trying to talk directly to YouTube. I'm not part of a network. If YouTube does something that screws me over, I'm screwed completely so if this subscription service screws me i'm screwed completely i have no recourse whatsoever i cannot in any way talk to youtube i can submit you know feedback and that's it that's all i can do i can do nothing else and i have very little belief that google actually pays attention to the feedback that i give them or that anybody gives them they probably have to get like a thousand of the same thing before they even like glance and go oh that's a thing and they probably have to get several hundred thousand more before they go, okay, maybe we should pay attention to this thing. But yeah, so YouTube Red is here. I'm hoping that it's our savior, but you know, everybody's afraid of it and for legitimate reasons, they're afraid of it. Um, I probably haven't added anything to the conversation. I just wanted to say it. So Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next episode. As always, keep playing the game, and have fun.